Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Pray continually. That's what I was telling you. Pray always. And then number eight, see, I, I added to, I just took all the scripture that it talked about the armor of God. So I think prayer is a pretty good armor too. And I think this next one, number eight, he given me two eyes. So being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. To realize it's not just about me, but I'm watching out for my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen? That we're supposed to watch out for each other. If, if, if we see each other going down a wrong path, we need to be able to tell each other, amen? To say, hey, I, I see something coming that, you know, is not good. Now, I, I put on Facebook this week um, about what our state is, is doing. That um, it's on the governor's desk right now to sign, for him to sign a law into law that allows boys and girls in our school system to decide what sex they want to be. Okay, so it allows, if a little girl says, you know what, I want to be a boy, and she wants to dress like a boy, she can use the boy's bathroom, and she can play on boy's sports. Now, and a boy could say, I'm a girl, and he could dress like a girl, and he can use the girls' bathrooms, and he can play girls' athletics. Okay, that's going on right now, okay? And, you know, when I was young, I wasn't always perfect, and um, could be heathenistic in my thinking. And I, I told somebody the other day, I said, you know, when I was in high school, I said, yeah, I'm a girl, just so I could go that way. You don't think that's going to happen? But you know what? I put that on Facebook. Very little response to it. I said, here's the number to the governor. Here's his fax number. Let's just fax things in. Let's just say, please, please veto this. You don't have to be mean. You don't have to be hateful. All you've got to do is say, please, don't do this. I've been in California all my life and I don't want this. I faxed him and I emailed him. I'm being watchful. I'm being watchful for your sakes. But if you do nothing with it, it's not my fault. You've got kids in the school system. If you're okay with it, I'm not okay with it. I'll tell you why. Listen to this. This is talking about the Lord knew the homosexual agenda was coming, okay? So he said this. He said, um, Therefore God also, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. Right here. Who exchanged the truth of God for a lie. It's all a lie. Okay? It's a lie. And worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up in vile passions, for even their woman exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burned in their lust for one another. Men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. So this is the word of God. And so when, when things are presented to you, hey, you should write your governor, and you don't have to be mean. You don't have to include any hate speech. You could just say, I'm a member of California, and I would appreciate if you vetoed this. I mean, very simple things. But listen, we, we don't do that. We don't take the time. It's like it doesn't matter. We've got to wake up. Maybe not. You know, yesterday we had uh, for America here. Yeah, they get. 
I'm still good. They, <laughs> they, they, gave, they gave a report. This is, I, I came to it yesterday. I opened it up in prayer and, and prayed and shared my thoughts about what's happening. And, and it, the thing that I hear from a lot of people is, I, I won't go to that because of the hate speech. There was not any hate speech there yesterday. All they did was they informed us of what our government's doing. They're watching. They're telling you. And let me tell you, the thing that I, I, I hear about World War II is they ask the pastors, how did you let this happen? I said, all it takes is for a few good men not to say anything. That's how it happens. And there is so much going on in our nation right now that most of you probably don't know about. Even the freedom of speech thing that is, ha is happening to take away our right to speech, free speech, that's going on. And they're implementing this stuff because of the UN. And so, you know, I'm telling you this because I'm watching. And if you're not watching what's going on, because I see in America there, there's a spirit of Hezekiah that's in the land. The a spirit of Hezekiah, because when Hezekiah was king and, and he said, listen, when he said, the prophet came to Hezekiah and said, get your affairs in order, you're going to die. When it affected Isaiah directly, you are going to die, he prayed. He cried out to God, please God, no, I don't want to die, please God, you know, give me more, give me, give me more life. And God said, okay, I've heard the cry of your heart, Isaiah, I'm going to give you 50 more years. Hezekiah. Sorry. So, the princes of Babylon, they hear about Hezekiah's healing. And they send gifts. The princes come to Israel, they bring Hezekiah gifts because they've heard of his healing. It's, it's, been more, it's miraculous. And so, he shows them everything he has. He shows them everything that God has blessed them with. He opens up the treasuries and he's bragging about all the gold and the silver. He says, look what God has given me. And he shows them the temple. He shows them everything. Isaiah comes back and says, King Hezekiah, what did you show those men? He says, I showed them everything. He's like, oh, no. He says, everything you showed them, they're going to come and they're going to take away. They're going to take all your silver, all your gold, and they're going to take it back to Babylon. And he said, your son shall serve as eunuchs in the king's house. That's where Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego come in. They were eunuchs in the king of Babylon's house because of this one thing. And Hezekiah said this, because it didn't directly He said, well... At least I'll have peace in my life. That's what happens. What if he would have cried out to God again? You see, but when it doesn't affect us directly, we stop caring. Well, there's nothing to do with me. I'm not getting involved. The Lord has called me to be a watcher, to let you know what's going on. That's my responsibility, because your blood's on my hands if I don't tell you what's going on. You don't listen, that's your problem. Blood's on, your own blood's on your own hands. I put in my notes here, it's very easy to fall in the trap of not watching and keeping our head in the sand on the events of our society and that, so that we don't have to think about them. Here comes the disciples. He tells them this temple is going to be destroyed. And he sits down with them and they, they, tell, he, he, they ask him three questions. They said, tell us when these things will be. When's the destruction of the temple? Number two, what will be the sign of your coming? When is the second coming? And number three, what is the end of the age? The end. So as Jesus discusses this with them, we need to keep in mind that there's a near and far meeting on these prophetic signs in the sense that it, it also fits with now, okay? Some of it fits now, some of it was just for then. Now the temple that he, they showed him, it was destroyed in 70 AD um, by Titus. Now the temple of God, Jesus, was killed and resurrected in three days as he promised. 
That's that spiritual shift we talked about last week. Jerusalem was sacked in 70 AD, and much of the population was dispersed there. They said they killed um, 1.1 million people were killed during that siege on Jerusalem at that time. And um, by the time they surrendered, 97,000 people were captured and enslaved at that, that war in 70 AD. Now Titus, this is what he said, he refused to accept a wreath of victory as he claimed that he had not won the victory on his own, but that he had been the vehicle through which their God had manifested his wrath against his people. That's pretty observant of Titus. You know, but I want to continue going through the signs of what Jesus said to them of his coming. What's going to happen? But the thing that I, I never want to forget is verse 14. That we are to keep spreading the gospel no matter what happens. That we are to keep telling people about Jesus no matter what is going on in this world, in our life. Amen. We are to keep spreading the gospel. Our feet are shod with the gospel of peace. Prepare yourself, plant a seed, and reap a harvest. Amen. You get ready. Spread the gospel. Amen. That's what we're called to do. So Jesus sits down with the disciples and he says this. He said, number one, take heed that no one deceives you. No one deceives you. You know, it's on you to make sure that you're not deceived. If you know this, no one can deceive you. If you don't know it, people can twist it and you'll receive it. You go, oh, wow, but this guy said this. Show me that in the Bible. I've heard people stand out and say, you know what? I'm going to tell you things that aren't in here. Run. <laughs> I'm being held accountable too, amen? You know, I, I'm, I must teach the Word of God. I must share the Word of God with you. I cannot change it or add to it. The Word is the Word. Amen? You know, now, since I, I teach the Word, and if you don't adhere to it, if I share with you the Word of the Lord and you don't adhere to it, the Bible says you're deceiving yourself. You're in deception. You know, when Ezekiel talks about being a watcher, as I've already talked about, if I don't warn you, your blood is on my hands. It's very clear in Ezekiel. But if I do warn you and you still don't do it, that's on you. Now, chapter 24 in Matthew here talks about being deceived four times. First one, it says that it about, talks about deceiving you. The, twice, number two, it talks about deceiving many. And then the, third, the fourth time, which is number three, it talks about deceiving the very elect. Who do you think the elect is? body of believers. It's us. So, take heed that no one deceives you. So number two today is how do we get deceived? Now, I went strictly to the Word of God for this. I just looked up Scripture after Scripture after Scripture, and I'm going to give you ten. So if you got a pen, that's what the back of this bulletin's for, so that you can, um, you can just write down the Scripture titles when I have them. And um, about how not to get deceived. That's what we'll, we'll finish off with that today. Ten things on how, how do we get deceived. N um, number one, verse five, says, by someone claiming to be Christ and coming in his name. Maybe, maybe you remember Jim Jones, Jesus, that drank the green, green Kool-Aid suicide, 900 people. You remember that guy? Um, how about Marshall Applewhite? I think it was down here in the San Diego area, you know, Heaven's Gate cult who committed suicide thinking they're going to catch a ride on the, the Hale Bob Comet. He professed to be Jesus. Or there, there's a guy out today, Jose Luis de Jesus Miranda, who says there's no hell and there's no devil and that he's the Christ and he tattooed 666 on his arm and he's got thousands of followers right now who are willing to tattoo 666 on their bodies. People that coming. And professing that they're the Christ. And what's funny to me 
It's a dissatisfied Christian will run to that. Number two, false prophets. A prophet walks into a city. The Lord told him, I want you to go. I want you to deliver the word. I don't want you to stay the night. I don't want you